monter vers l'ennemi. That should hold them back for a while. Now that we're alone, why don't you just tell us who you are? Calm down. My name is Endro. Go on. I am in the service of House Halton. On orders of my lord, I infiltrated Valar's men so I could find you. Valar? So he succeeded in following us this far? Unfortunately, yes. And it's you thereafter, young lady. We already knew that. But I would like to know why he's so interested in her. I'm sorry, but I do not know the exact reasons. Valar never shares his motives with the Bloodseekers. He is content just to give them orders. Bloodseekers? <laughs> is that what he calls his men? I remember that that's what the imposter Yorn shouted when he got them to attack us. Indeed. Yon was one of Valar's best lieutenants. It was he that our army was chasing when we were traveling north. You haven't told us how you succeeded in finding us after that. Indeed. I covered our tracks and I killed Yorn with my own hands. We came across his camp, which had been destroyed. We found a survivor there who told us of you. But even knowing which direction to travel in, it wasn't easy tracking you down. Listen, I don't care what you think you already know about Valar. He has become a powerful man. Luckily for us, I was able to warn Lord Halton of his plans in time. My lord sent men to our rescue. And how many are you exactly? Too few. Did you hear that outside? While we were speaking, Valar's advance guard surrounded the house. But they didn't realize that my own men had secretly surrounded them. As we speak, Valar's men are being attacked from every angle. Now, if you wish to live, you must fight alongside us to help my men drive them back. If Falar's main forces arrive before we can escape, we won't have a chance. And how would we accomplish that? Well, if all goes well, we will have enough time to escape by the river. It's the only route quick enough, if we're to escape. Enough words. Let our swords do the talking. Jane, we're going outside. Barricade the doors as best you can behind us. I'll make sure of it. Please. Be careful. Ethan, my friend, you're here just at the right time. Gods be good, Andrew. I'm a knight now. Try to remember that in the presence of strangers. My apologies, sir. This is Morse. He is with the young girl, Jane. That's Sir Westford to you. So you were a knight, Sir Westford? That explains a lot. I've never seen a member of the Night's Watch fight like you before. Indeed. My men told me you were the warrior himself returned. But please forgive us, sir. I failed in one of my duties. I am Sir Ethan of the Reach, captain of Lord Harton's Guard. I assume Andrew has told you how grave the situation is. As we speak, Valar is directing the larger part of his army towards us. Jane, what are you doing here? You should have stayed away. My belly, Moors. I think something's wrong with the baby. Black blood. This just gets worse and worse. We cannot linger here, Sir Westford. We must leave as soon as possible. Wait! Where do you think you're going? To my master's stronghold, Castlewood. It is but half a day from here. If we leave now, we could be there by tomorrow afternoon. I'll wager that Maester Martin will be able to help your friend. A maester? Did you hear that, Moors? Yes, but please. We must leave within the hour. If we do not, none of us will leave here alive. We'll take care of you, my girl. You need treatment. Lead us. Ah, our valiant black brother. Tell me, Sir Westford, from the impressive way you fight, it would seem you are no stranger to war. I would rather not talk of such matters. Shame. I would like to learn more about you. You spoke of having infiltrated Valar's men. 
Why would your lord entrust you with such a mission? He trusts me with delicate missions, such as infiltration and gathering information. But you seem somewhat suspicious, Sir Westford. We're on the same side, you know. I hope so. You have nothing to fear from us, sir. We are allies. But allies? That remains to be seen. I know nothing of your lord, nor of your motives. Your distrust saddens me. Let us prove to you that we are worthy of your trust. Once we've healed your friend, I believe you'll no longer doubt us. We'll see. How do you feel now? I'm better. Are you sure you're hiding nothing from me? No, don't worry. It's just that when the soldiers started breaking down the doors, I feared for my child's life. I was stuck there and the pain was worsening. I thought it had something to do with the baby. I tried to remain calm. But when everything started to calm down, I had to come to you as quickly as I could. But now that things are quiet, I am a little better. I assure you. Glad to hear it. Moors, there are some things about me you should know. But I... I don't know where to begin. So, let me ask you then. Very well. Jane, with that silver head of hair, you are a Targaryen, are you not? Yes. My father was Ares II, the Mad. You're the former king's daughter. That explains a lot. It may also make our lives harder in the future. I'm used to that. I have always led a difficult life, Moors. I can well imagine. I remember the day I left for the wall. Robert Baratheon launched a great purge on all those with the blood of the dragon. Despite everything, I have never blamed Robert. The Targaryens and Ares the Mad were particularly vile and cruel people. When my mother served at the court, that madman raped and maimed her. So yes, I spent all of my childhood running and hiding with my mother. At the start of it all, I thought we were playing a game. That is, until my mother revealed the truths of my origins to me. Since then, I've wanted nothing to do with these people. My child will not have that bloodline's cursed head of hair, but with the mother as my witness, the raven black hair of his father instead. Raven black? Are you saying that King Robert is the father of your child? I'm quite sure of it, yes. This has to be why John Aaron offered me his help and protection. It's also the reason I traveled north. I was supposed to be safe there. And the king? Does he know you're with child? I very much doubt it. He doesn't seem at all interested in such matters. You should have told me of all this before we left. I'm sorry, Moors. If I had known who you truly were, I would have confessed this a long time ago. Well, I understand better now why you wish to conceal your identity when we found you. Yes, it has become a habit of mine whilst traveling. I have to wear a hood to hide my hair, as it attracts too much attention. You should know that I also have a few secrets that could make me an outcast. Are you speaking of the fact that you disobeyed your liege lord? No. At the wall, we leave our past behind. Only the Lord Commander has heard of mine. It's just that there is an animal side to me, which makes people distrust me. And yet they know so little of it. It is true that some common courtesy would befit you. I won't argue that. There you are, Sir Westwood. Tell me, I've been wondering. Andrew told us you were a man of the Night's Watch. If you are indeed a sworn brother, how is it we find you in the middle of the Riverlands in the company of a young woman? I am a recruiter for the Night's Watch, and it is my mission to protect this young woman. Here is the official document that proves it. I see. I've already heard talk of you, Sir Westford. You distinguished yourself in battle many times during Robert's Rebellion. In fact, I saw for myself a little while ago. I don't really know your story, but I don't believe the Wall is a place for a warrior such as yourself. In truth, I prefer the shadow of the Wall to the intrigues of the South. Wise words. Games of power do not interest me either. I'm content simply to serve my lord with honor. And your friend, how is she? She is feeling better. Why does it interest you? My lord told me to take particular care of her. I see. And why would that be? Sorry, but I don't know. You will be able to ask my lord questions at your leisure, as soon as you see him. Believe me, I intend to. Good. I still have to organize the watch for the end of this stop. You should try to get some rest too. Moors? 
We have not yet spoken of what we found behind the house. I cannot understand what happened. They were supposed to be safe. Few people know this place exists. It should never have happened. Mors, I am truly sorry. It is strange. Someone went to the trouble of burying them. And from the weather-worn state of the tombstones, I'd say it happened some time ago. What should we do? I will find those who did this, and they will pay for what they've done. I swear it. I understand. You seem anxious again. I am. Everyone here seems to have their eyes fixed on me. I do not know what to make of it. If they were enemies of ours, they would already have killed us. Without their help, I don't believe we would have escaped Valar's soldiers. Yet I don't trust them. Nor me. I fear for the baby. I don't know what might happen if I don't see a maester soon. You will be able to see their maester. But let's keep our visit as short as possible, and I'll think of where to go next. I'll you rest some more. Thank you, Mors. Thank you for everything. Go and get a little rest. The end of this journey will be rough. You're right. You should rest too, if you can. Greetings! You must be the black brother of whom Andrew spoke. It's rare to meet one of your folk in these parts. Tis a pity, though. One of my nephews had to take the black recently. He was a good lad. Never heard anything of him since. I hope you treat him well. Perhaps I know him. What do they call him? I don't know if you know of him. He left not that long ago. Poddy is his name, poor boy. What a sorry business just for petty theft. Ah yes, young Poddy. Unfortunately, he died in the shadow of the wall. What? Poddy is dead? But why didn't anyone tell us? At the wall, we have but one family. Our sworn brothers. But... What shall I tell his parents now? Dark wings, dark words. I thought that only applied to actual crows, not to you men of the Night's Watch. Please, say no more. Spare me from worse news. I would rather you speak with Joshua. Ah, at last, my guests of honor. I am Arwood Halton, Lord of Castlewood. You are most welcome here. Lord Halton, thank you for the precious help you have given us. Do not mention it, my lady. My men have told me of your condition. I inform my maester of your arrival. He is ready to see you immediately. Very well. Let us go and see the maester. Mors, don't worry about me. I can manage it alone from here. We shall go together. I would like to see this maester too. Good. Very well. You will find the maester in a room nearby. Go left as you leave here. Marianne, you shall accompany our guest. After that, you will go and ensure that our other guest has everything he needs. Yes, Uncle. You are the young woman whom Lord Harton told me of? Come in and make yourself at ease. There, Moors. Thank you for accompanying me. But we really must be left alone for now. So be it. Take care of her, Meister. Do not worry yourself. After you, my lady. Oh, there you are. I hope you feel reassured. You care considerably for this young girl. It's true, but I have good reasons that I'd prefer to keep to myself. I see. I was led to believe you were in the Night's Watch. That's right. It is a rare sight to see a black brother so far from the wall. The Lord Commander made me a recruiter. As such, I go where I see fit. Yes, I heard of your appointment. I know of you, Sir Westford. Oh, uh, really? Please. Do not take offense. I can assure you that you have nothing to fear from me, sir. Your name is well known to me. Of all the brave knights of Robert's Rebellion who live on in memory, you are undoubtedly one of my favorites. One of two heroes of the Battle of Stag's Mount. At the time, some said that on a battlefield, you were worth ten men. Time often twists the truth. A stream becomes a flooded river. A cottage becomes a castle. It's true, but tales of you are not that far from the truth, according to my men. 
I don't see where you are going with this. Well, please excuse this crude question, but how could someone of your stature end up at the wall? During the sack of King's Landing, I received a direct order from my liege lord, asking me to murder a woman and her children. I did what I thought just, and in doing so, disobeyed him. But alas, it wasn't enough to save them. Ah, I understand now. Allow me to tell you what I think of this tragic event. I hope you will take my curiosity as a mark of respect. I will be the judge of that. Very well. If I remember rightly, House Westford were bannermen to the Lannisters. Your liege lord must be none other than the ruthless Tywin Lannister. Reliable sources tell me that you were sent to the Wall a little before Robert Baratheon became king, for reasons that escaped me at the time. But I think I understand now. I'll wager that Tywin entrusted you with the most disgraceful of missions that day. That of murdering Elia Martell, Prince Rhaegar Targaryen's wife and her children. Perhaps you refused through loyalty to your old king, Eris Targaryen. Tell me. No. I was not fond of the Mad King. But even so, I could never murder a woman and her children, whatever my oath. I was not far from the truth. Anyway, I was right about one thing. You are a worthy man, Sir Westford. If you accept, We'll discuss this further over the dinner I have prepared in honor of your arrival. Please, find your lady friend and join us for dinner. I'm happy you're here, Moors. What happened? The maester confirmed that nothing serious will happen as long as I take some rest. Good. This Lord Harlton, he seems friendly enough, but he appears to know a lot about us. Too much for my liking. Do you think you will be able to leave this place anytime soon? I... I think it better that I stay here a little while longer. You must excuse me, Moors. I know you are worried, but I'm in no condition to travel right now. Not in this state. It's not a problem. Let's try to make the most of it and get your strength back. Well, we are expected at dinner. Do you feel you can make it? Yes. Very well. Let's go. I'll follow you. I am counting on you to help your friend get some rest. It is best not to take any needless risks. I have seen enough young women lose a child to know that we can be sure of nothing until the child is born. I understand. I will take care. Thank you for your care, Maester Martin. Well, young lady, how did this happen? Are you any better? Yes, Maester Martin made me drink a brew and the pains have disappeared. I must thank you. He told me that if I should rest, and avoid any unnecessary effort, then everything should be well. Magnificent. I'm so relieved. You may stay here as long as you please, and relax at your leisure. I thank you. Oh, do not mention it. It is a real honor to receive you at Castlewood. Please, I beg of you, come sit with me at my table. Well now, you must be famished after all these misfortunes. Please, serve yourself. Thank you for this dinner, Lord Halton. Jane, my dear, there is something I must tell you. A very long time ago, I had the great honor of meeting with your father. What? You know my father? Your magnificent silver hair does not allow you to hide your origins, my lady. It compels us to admire that you are a direct and noble descendant of Valeria. Tell me, could anything be more esteemed than massacring, raping, and burning people? Well, that's exactly what my father did to my mother, as well as so many others. Listen, I... Can we save this conversation for later? Moors, is everything all right? Yes, I just need to rest. It is true that King Eris had his demons. And it pains me to hear your tale, my lady. But... Although I understand your resentment, the Targaryen dynasty reigned for 300 years. 300 years of peace and prosperity. There were some conflicts around that time, no? If I remember rightly. Events that were but a faint blemish in the golden age of House Targaryen. Jane, your father was unfortunately one of the last of the bloodline. 
Due to Robert's rebellion, it has all but disappeared. And what are we left with? A realm and people on its knees. Westeros does not deserve such a fate. The legitimate kings need to take back their throne. And do you think... You think Jane is the heir you need? You are aware that I am just one of Eris's bastards, aren't you? I go by the name of Greystone, not Targaryen. Do not worry yourself with such small matters, my dear. Your family is still revered by the people, and they would welcome back the return of the dragon with open arms. For common folk, the color of your hair is all it takes. All they really need is a symbol. A symbol? Of a mad and massacred bloodline? A tribute to the Game of Thrones? I've been trying to lead a peaceful life for such a long time. And now you ask me to run headlong into a nest of snakes? It is our duty to reinstate the natural order, Lady Jane. And to rid the throne of the usurper. We... we are not here to discuss politics, Lord Halton. Take your fate into your own hands, Jane. If you join us, you'll live the life you've always dreamed of. My child is not even born, and he's already a victim of your political games. You think that's the life I dream of? You misunderstand. He will always be safe by our sides. We will give him the Iron Throne. I would have nothing to do with a damned throne. I just want to forget all this and live my life in peace, far from politics of the realm. And what of him? With or without our protection, your child will still be an heir to the throne. You realize that? His enemies will involve him in all this sooner or later. Is that what you wish for his future? Have I not made it clear? I do not care one bit for matters of the crown, and I shall never enter into any of your schemes. I see. So there is no way to make you see reason. Believe me, that upsets me. I have just one more question for you. Do you remember that hunt where you met the usurper? Do you believe that was coincidence? What are you suggesting? The arrangement of that fell to us. The king was responding to an invitation from a friend. Not that long before, I had discovered your esteemed ancestry and realized that it was my duty to help you gain the throne. I made the necessary arrangements so you could quietly have your love affair with the usurper. It's thanks to this that your child has both the blood of the dragon and the stag. Robert would never allow himself to be manipulated. He conquered the Seven Kingdoms. Unless he had enough to drink, that is. Which has a certain irony, when you think about it, since it is quite similar to what happened this evening with your friend. Bastard. You, you will feel my blade. Guards, seize her! Good guts. I think he's ready now. Let me question him. Right, listen well. If you tell us what we want to know, we won't hurt you. However, if you anger me in any way, guts will fetch his favorite tools. The last time he worked someone over, the poor lad was left a cripple and could drink through several holes. Well, for about two months he could. Until we killed him. And believe me, you don't want that happening to you. We'll start with an easy one. Who are you? A brown bear in chain mail. Half-wit. You think you're funny? You'll regret that. Go ahead, Guts. Give him a beating. <laughs> Good. 
Now let's try to talk like civilized blokes, shall we? Who's the girl you're with? Which one? The one I fucked yesterday? That was your mother. I'd say he hasn't yet learned his lesson. Feel free to give him your all this time. I can see he hasn't had enough. My pleasure. All right, have you calmed down? If you continue like that, you won't last long here. Now, I suggest you have a long, hard think before answering this next question. What is your true mission? To cut new holes for people like you to shit out of. That's my mission. Well, I succeeded quite well at dinner, didn't I? I didn't get any complaints from those I took care of anyway. I'll say you want to be tough. Very well, you've asked for it. Just remember this. You deserve every single second of what's coming to you. Guts here is quite the master at sculpting flesh. You'll see. You'll make a real work of art from you. Go on, Guts. Show us your talents. Now then. You're much prettier like that. Now you're going to tell me that it wasn't all that bad. I'd say he was awake. But he doesn't look good. Do you hear me, rat fucker? I hope the pain gave you something to think about. Lord Alden wants answers. We found John Aaron's letter among your belongings. We know he sent you. The question is, why? Did he know of our brotherhood? Aaron did not tell me anything of it. He simply asked me to protect the girl. You wouldn't be lying to me, would you? If you fuck as well as you ask questions, I wouldn't be surprised if your wife whores around just for fun. I must admit I find you most amusing. But my patience has its limits. Go on, Guts. Tear off a couple of his nails so he knows who he's dealing with. Oi, nails! I enjoy that. <laughs> so, how was the first course? You will answer my questions, even if it means we have to tear your nails off one by one. Was John Aaron aware of our brotherhood? Yes or no? Of course he knew. As do all those he told. Even the King knows. You are fucked. Really? If it were true, the King would have raised his armies. And our spies would have told us of it. Why try to tell such tales? Is it a question of honor? Is that it? Are you afraid of betraying your friends? You should relax a little, you know. We already know that John Aaron turned to others to protect the girl. We know that their leader was called the Mother Hen. Go on, stop trying to summon the will to stay defiant. What's holding you back? Are you afraid of betraying your friends? You should relax a little, you know. Both are dead. Telling us what you know will not earn you their wrath. I will ask you one last time. What did John Aaron know about our brotherhood? He knew that you were planning something. He knew that you wanted the girl. The only thing he failed to do catch you in the act. That's the reason they sent me. I'm the bait. And who are they? Did you really believe that Aaron was the only one interested in you? He may be dead, but others continue his mission. I must go and speak with Lord Alton. Guts, take care of him. He needs to be punished for not telling us this sooner. Am I free to do as I please? 
Just make sure he has a very bad night, so he has a change of art. But don't ruin him too much, understood? Come, we'll stop there. I'm starving. We'll continue tomorrow. Come, Guts. Let's go back. You know what, Crow? Lord Alton wants to question you himself. If I were you, I'd be careful what I say from now on. Thank you, Harris. This is between him and me now. What? An unfortunate situation this is, my dear Moors Westford. My men think that you are in the service of John Arryn. And according to them, you are now working on behalf of others who want to bring down our brotherhood. Let's start at the beginning. How do you know John Arryn? Everyone knew him, half-wit. He was the King's Hand. You're not that clever, are you? I hope that you've at least got more down your bridges than those virgins who've been attending to me for the past two days. Harris, Guts, show our guests the price of his disrespect. Guts, find the rustiest blade you can. Tear his skin apart. No mercy. Make him think twice about being rude. So, my dear Westford, how are you enjoying our hospitality? Well, your pets need some more training, but on the whole, it will do. And still this insolence. Unfortunately, I cannot stay and play the fool with you for much longer. The sun will soon be rising, and more important matters require my attention. I will return before nightfall. What about him? What do we do with him? You shall have time to play with this rat later. Right now, I need you elsewhere. And when you see him again, give him death and make sure he dies screaming. I want his head on my table by the time I return. Come on, Guts. You heard the orders. Get the brand burning. Let's have a little fun. Very well. I'll make it so this wretch's own mother don't recognize him. Pass me the brand. All right, Crow. Let's see if you could keep looking down on us with only one eye. 